Hi, I'm Pete Myers, founder and chief scientist of Environmental Health Sciences. This is Ask Pete Anything, where you get to ask leading scientists and researchers anything about environmental health. Welcome to episode two of the Ask Pete Anything series. We received a lot of questions about plastic, so this episode we brought in our friends at the Plastic Pollution Coalition to answer them. Question one. I take plastic jugs to a spring for drinking water. Are clear or cloudy white milk jugs safer? Clear water bottles are usually made from PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Research shows they leach the toxic heavy metal antimony in addition to endocrine disrupting chemicals that impact the hormonal system and plastic particles, especially when exposed to warm temperatures or when recycled. Cloudy white rigid food containers, such as those used to hold milk, are most commonly made of high-density polyethylene, also known as HDPE. These containers have tested positive for endocrine-disrupting PFAS chemicals and shed plastic particles. What's more, all plastics pollute throughout their endless toxic existence, from the moment their fossil fuel ingredients are extracted and processed to when they are eventually disposed, most often burned or dumped in landfills or the environment. Instead of trying to pick the lesser of two harmful plastics, the question you should be asking is, what non-toxic reusable bottle or jug can I find to bring with me to collect water? Glass, stainless steel, and ceramic are better choices. You could even buy milk, juice, or another beverage in a glass bottle and repurpose it. Question two, we have PEX pipe red and blue for hot and cold water. Is this safe for drinking water? PEX, or cross-linked polyethylene, has become a popular choice for pipes as it is flexible, durable, and corrosion-resistant. It's somewhat porous, however, which means that it can harbor bacteria, mold, and other contaminants. Scientists have also found that PEX pipes leach volatile organic compounds, also called VOCs, which are known to harm human health. Question 3. I try to buy few beverages, like milk, oat milk, and orange juice, and when I can, I buy in glass. Sadly, the options for glass are disappearing. Milk in glass is sometimes, but not always, available. Which is better for my health? A plastic jug or a wax-lined paper carton? Which is better for the environment? I really wish glass bottles would come back. It's great to hear you're an advocate for the glass milk jug. It's reusable, refillable, and non-toxic, so it's an excellent option when it's available. Unfortunately, plastics and cartons are not designed to be easily recycled, despite industry claims to the contrary. Cartons are coated with plastic, not wax, so we can't recommend one over the other, since plastic leaches chemicals. The best option, if you are opting for beverages like oat milk or orange juice, is to purchase the raw ingredients in material other than plastic. For example, you can purchase oats in a paper or cardboard container, especially if it's sold in bulk, or loose oranges to make your own beverages. Recipes are now widely available online and can help you avoid plastic and other packaging while usually also being healthier for you. Question four, are there any studies on whether food packaged in plastic, such as fresh produce or a grain product, contains micro or nano plastic particles? Yes, most all food, from processed items to meat, supermarket seafood, produce, beverages, including tap and bottled water, and salt, unfortunately now contain plastic particles. That's because these particles are now all around us, in the air, waters, soils, oceans, even outer space. Question five. If the United Nations is planning to create giant artificial islands floating in the oceans to move coastal populations after global warming floods their homes, why not recycle trashed automobile tires, plastic items, styrofoam, and trashed hollow giant windmill blades into buoyant bedrock for these artificial islands? The UN has convened several roundtables on sustainable floating cities to combat the major threats posed by sea level rise and other pressures on coastal communities. However, it would be wise to avoid creating any new infrastructure from plastic debris or trash. All plastic around us is constantly shedding toxic plastic particles, and these particles shed at an accelerated rate when exposed to water, waves, and extreme temperatures as are found in the oceans. Also important is to stay focused on addressing the core causes of climate change, continued human reliance on fossil fuels, including plastics production, use, and disposal, and preparing communities for the changes ahead. Question 6. What are your thoughts about recycling plastics to create building blocks and household items? If someone is living in one, what action should they take? Plastic Pollution Coalition is currently engaged in research on this topic. First off, incorporating plastics into infrastructure is not recycling. Instead, it is the sequestration of plastic and its toxic chemicals into the environment. 
All plastics shed plastic particles, and infrastructure and homes made of plastic are putting people and the environment at direct risk of contamination. What's more, plastics off-gas toxic chemicals and volatile organic compounds that can make people ill, in addition to carrying a high risk of fire compared to traditional building materials, plastic is more flammable than wood. People living in these structures should consider alternative living arrangements, but could better reduce their health risks immediately by covering the plastics with other non-toxic materials such as wood or stone. Detailed research is ramping up, though generally we see that a lack of data exists around the health and ecological impacts of incorporating plastics into our built environment. The EHN Newsroom is powered by Environmental Health Sciences, a nonpartisan nonprofit that drives good science into public policy and public discussion.